Uh, item three, Mr. Rug, you're going to talk to us about the uh, draft economic development plan. I am. Good morning, Mayor, City Commissioners. Chris Rug, Director of Economic Development for the City of West Palm Beach. So yes, um, late uh, last week I did email out uh, the the final draft of the plan. Um, I do want to make one little note um, on that. There are still some, um, just some general formatting and grammatical things that I am cleaning up. But for the most part, the content is um, has been established. So this has um, this plan has been in the works now for uh, the better part of. Um, uh, I guess a couple of years now, if you take into account the economic development study that occurred uh, in 2018. So today I'm just do, gonna do a quick overview of how we got to this point. Um, I'll go over the general goals and framework of the plan. There's, there's a ton of information inside of it, so I'm not gonna go through every single detail, um, but sort of give a, a general overview. Talk about what's happened today as, as it relates to outreach and, um, inf and um, uh, folks uh, giving me feedback on the overall plan and then ultimately if you have any other questions um, and I will ask for some direction um, at the conclusion of the presentation uh, but I do want, want to first start out I do uh, Dennis and Raphael are in are, are in the audience I do want to thank them and the rest of the steering committee um, that helped with this plan uh, it was the Chamber of Commerce Kelly Smallridge from the BDB um, uh, Michelle Jacob from Economic Council the CRA and uh, Raphael from the DEA helped steer and sort of guide the formation of this plan. So I do wanna take a moment to thank them for their help. So um, just to go back in time a little bit uh, to talk a little bit about the history. So in 2018, we completed the economic development plan for the city. And then uh, the fall of 2018 is when we kicked off the actual planning based on the data that we had received. And that started with a lot of business leaders from around the city meeting in this room to discuss what they thought or what they would like to see as for priorities for economic development for the city. And that kicked off a series of meetings um, with uh, individual businesses, groups. Um, we did a survey in the, uh, the winter of 2019 and just continued to collect data till we got to a point where we had enough information that we could actually start formulating the plan. And then during the spring, um, actually started uh, drafting the overall plan. But uh, just to sort of highlight what was the main focus of the business community and the plan, and, or, or I'm sorry, of the, of the survey, the plan really takes its cues from three sources. One is the economic development study that occurred in 2018. Second is the business community's thoughts and input based on that study. And... Um, and lastly, uh, the city strategic plan. And what we saw out of the data and the business community acknowledged it is that we are creating jobs faster than we can fill them, which is great news. We have tremendous job growth and this is not new, this has been continuing. Um, however, the bad news is, is that we do have this, this issue of this 17% poverty rate, which has been well documented. But the business community said, well, we have job growth, we have a poverty rate, why don't we just um, really focus on generating um, great talent that we can then fill those jobs with and pull those folks out of poverty and make that a key cornerstone for the economic development plan. And that's what we did. So with that, uh, we developed an overall vision and mission uh, for the economic development plan based on five goals. And I'll get into those goals in a second. And underneath each one of those um, are actual activities and projects. Um, and then, of course, those will be measured um, by consistently gathering data, some of which will need to be created, some of which we have on hand, so that we can understand the actual effectiveness of our economic development purposes. I do want to take a moment that, um, and do mention 
that um, resoundingly what I've heard in, in the travels of outreach for this plan was not to recreate the wheel. So using existing programs, using existing resources that are currently available um, to the city, whether that's um, plans from uh, sustainability and or, or Vision Zero or our arts, ma arts master plan, our infrastructure or, and, uh, and capital um, improvement program, Whatever it is, all of those things were essentially built into this overall plan to really drive home that fact of we're not going to recreate the wheel. And even more so looking at uh, outside folks like uh, our local universities to use their programs as well, whether it's the school district, FAU, Palm Beach Atlantic University, whoever it may be. Um, inside uh, the plan, there are actually a couple of projects, sort of plans within a plan. And this was an idea that came from our consultant that helped with this, Avalanche Consulting. That was Tony DeLisi that I showed you earlier presenting the information. And they said, look, it, in order to really move the dial on some of your goals, you should have sort of priority projects. And so the two that sort of bubbled up out of the discussions and everything that I had mentioned was, A, revitalizing the north end, and that's actually under goal number three, which is infrastructure. And then goal number five, entrepreneurship and innovation, and that's uh, the development of the Jefferson Terminal District. So this map on the left was something that um, the planning department, um, Rachel Falcone and, um, and uh, 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 oh, I'm going to forget his name. Car no, well, Caroline did help a little bit, but I was thinking uh, the gentleman from Rise. Um, Craig Glover. Craig Glover, thank you. Um, sort of helped develop this asset map um, that was based on something that we actually did for the Jefferson Terminal District when we're doing their master planning, which Heather Danforth is helping with, but both two uh, really great uh, projects that are currently underway. And I'll actually mention this um, at the end, that um, I have, even though this plan has not been formally adopted, have sort of moved to implement a lot of the details and projects that are outlined in the plan. But ultimately, we have five goals that are inside this plan. So talent, business climate marketing, infrastructure quality of place, and entrepreneurship and innovation. And underneath each of those are specific strategies, and then under those strategies are activities. So I'm not going to get into each and every one of them because, uh, as I mentioned, there is a lot of information. But I did send out um, sort of the spreadsheet that lays out those details in priority order um, over a time frame. And that was actually um, a great suggestion by Rick Green. Um, to go ahead and put those things in order so that we can actually go back and tie um, each year from a budgetary standpoint what we need to fund and what activities we're going to prioritize each year and year. We measure that with the data. We'll understand if we're being effective or not. So this is just an example of what uh, one of those strategies looks like um, and underneath it what the activity is. So just um, under talent, which is uh, goal number one, and I do want to take a moment to say the goals are in priority order. I mean, they're all important, but if we did had to say, you know, what is, what are, you know, we're just forced to make a decision, they are in priority order, starting with that talent and fifth being that entrepreneurship. Um, and that's just because that talent, that talent issue is just such an important aspect for all businesses and for our community that uh, the, the business, and that actually came from the businesses when we were talking about it, that that really does need to be priority one moving forward. So under that, uh, under that goal, 1.3, you'll see it in the spreadsheet, developing that equitable, equitable opportunities for all um, through education and job opportunities. You'll see how we start actually uh, moving the dial on some of the activities that we plan, to, um, we plan to implement. And same thing for goal number five. Even though that's uh, misnumbered, it says uh, 4.2. It should say 5.2. And then after um, each, each goal does have a set of matrix that you'll see is tied to it. And as an example, um, measuring school attendance rates does correspond to actually making sure that folks are showing up for school and how the city can help with that. Um, and this shows you all of the different data sets that I plan to collect because you can't just look at one single data source and understand if you're being effective with economic development. You probably need to look at um, a series of data source depending on the goal that you're looking to achieve. So Chris, timeline. Oh. Question. Yes, question. Just a quick question on that last slide. It says goal 1.1.6 yes. and it's attendance, but I don't see that in the plan. So that's uh, the corresponding goal is actually the tactic. So if you look underneath okay. the spreadsheet, you'll see 1.1 um, 1 .1 
And then the sixth activity under 1.1 will be include Palm Beach County District as a partner to help drive attendance after primary um, school hours. Okay, awesome, thank you. So to date, um, when we initially drafted the plan, we reached out to you all um, and also circulated around the city staff. And since that time, I've been on the street and uh, out in the community collecting additional feedback um, on the overall plan. And this is actually the first step in formal adoption of the plan uh, that begins uh, this year. So this is, uh, these are the groups that I have met with um, and quite a bit of feedback that I've gotten from all of these uh, different individuals um, and, and businesses. So this was the most efficient way to actually get to every interested business group out into the community. There are some still outstanding. Um, I've ha have reached out to them several times, but just in the series of, of getting the plan moving, um, I'll continue to reach out to them. But um, for the most part, have gotten quite a bit of feedback um, and have just been compiling it. This is just a sample of a lot of the sticky notes um, as we were altering the plan, as it was moving forward. Um, but there's quite a bit of, um, of information that came from all of these groups to influence and make the plan better. And as I mentioned, um, we have started implementing a series of, uh, of items. I am happy to say this uh, picture on the right here of this young lady uh, actually making vegan Philly cheesesteak. That is Dina's Vegan Deli, who has opened at 314 Clematis Street as a pop-up, which is the 12 for 12 project and started this week. And I'm very excited to say, um, and uh, they were very happy with the, the soft opening that was kicked off. Um, and we are planning more um, activities moving forward. Uh, both Dina and Amy from Grow, um, who is selling these little small succulent plants, both popped up this weekend. And that will continue the pro as the project continues to evolve. The other businesses are preparing to open up, I believe, this weekend. Um, so that continues to be um, a, a great project that the Knight Foundation has helped us with um, moving forward. And that is actually in the plan. Um, down below... Uh, we, before you move off of that, yes. is there going to be some kind of uh, formal... Um, uh, we have grand opening, ribbon cutting or something, just to let the community know these are... Yes, Mayor. There. Well, part of, the, part of the plan is once we get them all, get all the kinks worked out, make sure that they're comfortable with everything, the plan will be to actually have some type of large event okay. uh, where we do a ribbon cutting and uh, there's also a marketing and promotion plan Good. Um, that will be included to make sure that everybody understands that these businesses are up and running and that they can come and visit them. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and down below our community partnership schools, uh, this is just ties straight into our talent initiative. That's uh, uh, Principal Daniels and Eileen Silber uh, with uh, some of the students from Northmore Elementary. That's been a successful program and just continues to build with volunteers from the community to help with those literacy activities and help build the talent in the city. And then, uh, as I mentioned, just a slew of other things that are tied to the economic development plan moving forward. So next steps, um, obviously this is step one, just to make sure that um, there isn't any additional uh, feedback that you all wanna share um, with me. Um, I would like to get this plan up on the city's website to garner just one last uh, sort of larger uh, release to the community to um, allow them to provide additional feedback. Then I will uh, formally prepare it with administration to make sure that everything's comfortable to bring it forward at a future um, commission meeting. Um, that I'll, I'll determine with them. So with that, uh, just a simple request uh, for direction on, on this plan, uh, because uh, I do think it's good and it's, uh, it's sort of ready for prime time. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, my, my, my thinking is that, that let's go full steam ahead and, and uh, move it toward finalization, adoption by uh, the commission, get it on the website, and let it uh, govern our behavior going forward. Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Show. Thank you, um, thank you, Mayor, for your leadership on this, and Chris, for your hard work, and our community partners as well. There's a lot that's gone into this, and as the District Commissioner for District 1, very, very excited to see um, the North End be a big part of this. I would ask for just a, a small tweak to make sure that we include um, Coleman Park 
because the Tamron corridor is extremely important to continue down through um, into those areas, and I don't think that they're always included in the rise area asset mapping um, specifically, but really, really extremely important to the success of the entire north end as well. So if we could have that included as well, I think you've done a great job, robust look at all the assets in the city, um, you know, from, from one end to the other. So um, happy to move forward with this as well. Thanks. Uh, any other, uh, Madam President? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate the presentation. And, you know, I was excited to see this progress over the last few years from the study to now this report and hearing, um, you know, I, I was excited to see that talent was listed first in priority order and to hear that the business community saw that as a, a great need as well. So just wanted to say thank you, and I'm very supportive of this. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Anyone else? If not, so I think you, uh, does that give you the direction you need? Yes, uh, I'll, I'll work with city administration sure. to get it on the next available agenda. Uh, there, there was one, and I was curious to hear what the business community response was. One of the slides you show, I think it was 75% of the new jobs are coming from outside of the city. Am, am I recalling that correctly? What was that statistic? 75% uh, of the new jobs are coming from... Are being filled by people outside Are you of, talking about commutes? Uh, as far yeah. as where the workers are coming from? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. So the labor shed, uh, to go back up to what the mayor had mentioned, the labor shed... Yeah, there uh, we go. Yeah, 75% of jobs filled by non-residents. Correct. So that's... non-residents of the city? That is correct. So we have a tremendous amount of folks that commute into the city on a, on a daily basis. Um, and those are just coming from surrounding municipalities in the city. Um, and it is a great way to, uh, you know, essentially capture future residents if they're working here. Um, chances are they may want to live closer to work. So creating more housing opportunities and um, other, uh, other ways for them to, and just improving the overall quality of life, I think, is a great way to sort of capture some of those folks that may um, like to live closer to where they work. But uh, a labor shed of 680000 actually includes most of Palm Beach County and actually dips into northern Broward. Okay, see, I saw that as a different, um, I read that differently because it, to me it, it shows the opportunity to get more of our residents um, employed. So, so there, the other, um, a good portion of our residents actually live in the city and then commute out as well. So okay. it's kind of... Do but we yes, have, do we have that metric somewhere? Um, in that the, would be interesting. In the actual economic development study, which is on the website, it does have it, it breaks down the labor shed and how people are moving back and forth between the city from an employment. Can you share that with me, please? Just break that out and share that with me, please. Yeah, you want it right now? No. Okay. Oh. Yes, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, Madam President. Thank you. I was also going to comment on this spreadsheet that you created as well. I think this is extremely helpful as we, you know, move forward in budgeting process to see what the plans are for the priorities. So yeah. thank you for doing this. The, uh, the credit really goes to Rick Green. I mean, he, he wanted to make that a priority um, for the plan, which I think has been a great um, tool uh, for folks understanding where we need to focus our efforts. And, and let me let me build upon what I was where I was going with that because you know we have this disconnect between the employment rate, the low employment rate in our city, and obviously the high, relatively high poverty rate. Um, and, and so uh, clearly, people have jobs, uh, but perhaps they aren't higher, aren't paying enough money or whatever. So it would be nice to know what jobs they have and you know, for our residents, the jobs they have are outside of our city uh, and therefore uh, maybe they aren't high, high paying enough so we need to get more and what are those jobs, what industries and, and I know it's in report somewhere, but what do we need to do to keep them A, employed in our city with jobs that will pull them out of poverty? And I know that's why that was the number one, the talent uh, pool was the number one priority. Uh, but I just want to, you know, drill down into 
the particular strategies. I know we got NCAT and, and, and stuff like that, but just so you and I can have an off, uh, offline discussion about that. Absolutely. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Wonderful report. I look forward to, to having uh, more information come out of that.